Before I begin the presentation, let's start with Pantun. Assalamualaikum pembuka kata. Salam sejahtera. Selamat berpuasa. Walaupun jauh, hilang di mata. YouTube channel diupdate sentiasa. Ladies and gentlemen, today I like to present on digital security risk from module 5. The internet has touched every aspect of life from banking, studying and shopping. Computer systems need proper security control to protect against criminals of cybercrime. Criminals who attack computer system are hacker, cracker, script kiddie, cyber extortionist, and cyber terrorist. Why did they do that? What are the effects? And how can it be prevented? To answer these questions, I am really not an expert. So I need someone to clarify this thing for you. I had interviewed one of my friends last week. In order to maintain her privacy as a certified ethical hacker, I just named her Mastura. As a cyber security expert, her duty is to identify security weaknesses and improve security control of the system. She has a bachelor degree in computer science. Currently, she works at Digital Forensic Department. Based on her view, I present this topic for you. So let us listen together to her stories. Her story begins with once upon a time, there was a company who faced digital security risks. Digital security risks are emerging due to rapid digital transformation. Computers, along with the data and programs, are exposed to the risk of hardware theft, unauthorized access and use, wireless security, internet and network attack, software theft, and information theft. Today, computers have become much smaller and easier to steal. From the news, we always hear about the computer being stolen. The most often are laptops, mobile device, and storage device. Aside from losing the devices, the company has to take a great amount of time just to recover from the problem. Let's go further on hardware theft, vandalism, and failure. Each carry different meaning altogether. What is hardware theft? Hardware theft is the act of stealing physical computer parts such as the tower, modem, or computer chip. The reason is because the thief wants to make money from it. Another one is hardware vandalism. Hardware vandalism is the act of damaging or destroying computer and its components. Hardware vandalism can take many forms, such as cutting a computer's cable and breaking into a computer lab. Next is hardware failure. Hardware failure refers to the breakdown of hardware components. Hardware fail for a number of reasons. For example, due to extreme temperature, lightning, unregulated power supply, and mistake done by human. There are many simple steps to protect against hardware theft, vandalism, and failure. For example, Use security alarm, 
lock doors and windows to limit physical access to your computer facility. You can also use device tracking apps that allows you to track the location of the stolen device on a map. In order to make sure hardware is working properly, you should do regular maintenance and update the program. If necessary, buy an interruptible power supply or UPS. UPS is also known as a battery backup. It provides backup power when your regular power voltage drops to an unacceptable level. The most common threat in a network system is unauthorized access to confidential information and computer resources by an intruder. Intruder can be someone from internal or external. Internal intruder is an unauthorized user who has the access to certain areas of the internal network or system. For example, employees and students. External intruder can be a hacker, cracker and thief. Improper access control may result in financial loss and interruption of computers network. What is the difference between unauthorized use and unauthorized access? Unauthorized use refer to the use of computer program or network for illegal activities. For example, employee surfing entertainment website during office hours using company's computers. Whereas, unauthorized access refers to the act of accessing computer this program and its data by unauthorized person. So who is unauthorized person? Unauthorized person is someone that is no longer permitted to access the system. But somehow that person managed to get an access to a system by stealing a valid password. This act is considered as an unauthorized access. There are many simple methods to protect again against unauthorized access. For example, you should disable file and printer sharing in your operating system. Remember to always update your operating system and your apps when new versions are available. Next is to turn on your firewall which protect your network from unauthorized user and limit access to sensitive and confidential data. Schools, universities, and companies can introduce acceptable use policy or AUP for which the computer and network may and not be used. Access control is another can Access control is another security measure that defines who can access, when they can access, and what actions they can take when accessing the computer. If possible, change to biometric devices such as fingerprint readers, face recognition system, and signature verification system. Another method to prevent unauthorized access is by using possessed objects such as badges, keys, and smart cards. These are all examples of items that one must carry to gain access to a computer and its facility. And next is wireless security. Although 
wireless access provide many conveniences to users. It also poses additional security risks. Please watch this video to learn more about it. Most of us use Wi-Fi to connect to the web. Wi-Fi is a wireless connection that links our devices, like desktops, tablets, smartphones, and laptops to the internet. When you're using Wi-Fi, you're sending or receiving information over a wireless network. When that information, like emails, bank account info, and even passwords is in transit over an unsecured network, it is susceptible to being intercepted by anyone within range of the wireless signal. So, it is important to know how to keep that information and your devices safe when connecting wirelessly. Protecting our information on the web can be as important as protecting our valuables at home. Just like most of us keep our homes safe by locking our doors, we recommend using strong locks for your information on the web. If you're running a Wi-Fi network at your home or business, you can help keep yourself and your visitors safe online by securing your network. But just as some locks are stronger than others, not all Wi-Fi security is created equal. The oldest standard for secure networks is called WEP, and it's a pretty weak lock. WEP security might stop a casual criminal, but it's actually not that hard to break. Fortunately, there are much better security modes available. WPA is good, but WPA2 is best. Any device with the Wi-Fi trademark sold since 2006 is required to support WPA2, and older equipment can generally be upgraded. We strongly recommend you use WPA2. WPA2 works with a password. It's important that you choose a unique, long mix of numbers, letters, and symbols so others can't easily guess it. If you're in a private space like your home, it's okay to write this password down so you remember it. Keep it somewhere safe so you don't lose it. But be smart, and don't make this the same password you use for your personal stuff. A quick note, while you're securing your network, you may see two options for security, personal and enterprise. Enterprise is the equivalent of a fancy badge system with a unique ID for each person, and you need IT help to set it up. If you use a regular metal key on the front door of your home or business, then personal WPA2 is fine for you. Now that you've secured your network, you should also secure access to your wireless router, the machine that connects Wi-Fi to the network. They come with the simple default password that many online criminals may already know, or no password at all. So we strongly recommend you change the password on your wireless router. This will prevent someone from gaining access to your router, which might allow them to change your network security settings. Keep this password to yourself. You should set up a different password to protect your router from the one used for your network. For help securing your wireless network and router, just search for the model number of your base station or router. In many cases, the info is available online. Otherwise, contact your internet service provider or the company that manufactured the router for instructions. So to recap, Wi-Fi is really convenient. We urge you to secure it with WPA2, a strong password, and to also set a password on your router. Now that you know how to set up your own secure Wi-Fi, we wish you happy browsing. For more advice on how to protect yourself and your family online, check out google.com slash good to know.